Welcome to Toffee TV, it is the Live Daily Extra. We're here all of January because there's going to be stories every single day, isn't there? Going to be stories every day. Um, Rafa Benitez has done a, an interview with Everton today discussing the new signing, something that we mentioned, was it yesterday on this show? Mm-hmm. That he should go out and do it, and obviously they've clearly watched him. They're probably watching live, probably commenting under his pseudonym. Um <laughs> Fast tag one. Um, there is a fast tag one in there. Is there? No. There isn't. No. So he's he's mentioned that. We'll we'll we'll. Baz is just going to read that interview now. Uh, Am I? <laughs> but it has come out today from the Liverpool Echo that Jean Philippe Gabamon is no longer wanted by Everton, no longer needed by Everton, and. Um, you know, can go out on loan or maybe move on a payment deal if mm-hmm. somebody is willing to offer money for him, which is it's sad if you know if it does happen, it's sad that it's come to this, but ultimately, um, he's the sh- he's a shadow of the player we bought mm-hmm. two and a half years ago. The, the injuries have well, the injuries, what the injuries have done is they've majorly set him back to the point where he's going to probably have to go somewhere. Play a lot of games of football at a at a lesser pace than the Premier League and try and get back to that level. Mm. But I d- it's not going to work sitting around at Everton. He's not doesn't come off the bench. The manager clearly doesn't think that his levels are up to it. Uh, even though we started him at Wolves in a two man midfield, which is weird. Which is one of the weirdest things any any manager's ever done in their lives. Mm. Um, but he's going to have to play games of football, and that's just not going to happen at Everton. Ironically, I think he might feature this Saturday against Hull, to be honest. But um, because if no one comes in for him, he's still part of our squad, isn't he? So he's mm. going to have to play games. And I guess Saturday against the Championship side, who's struggling because they are, might be the opportunity to have another look at him. But if he does play him, I hope it's in with a three to three in the field. Yeah. Playing him in the two when he isn't up to the speed because he hasn't played a lot of games doesn't help him in any yeah. way, shape or form. So if he's going to get a chance, and he may well do, like you said, at the weekend, um, for me it's got to be in a three-man midfield. But he, he's got to play games to get himself back to the level, any kind of level. You need games of footy. Yeah. Training is fine, but it's game fitness, it's match fitness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we saw him start at Wolves. He came on when Holgate got sent off against Spurs for three minutes at the end and he come on at Chelsea for, what, 15 minutes or 12 minutes, mm-hmm. whatever it was. Other than that, we've not seen him, have yeah. we? So, um, if, it, if he does play Saturday, I guess it'll be it'll be his, maybe his last chance to impress Rafa Benitez enough to say, actually, I might have, you know, there might be a player in here. But it does look as though Everton... Because ultimately what Everton have got to do is look at the players they've got available. Look at that bench and go, are you really going to make any kind of difference? Yeah. If he, I imagine he's on decent wages, 50 grand a week, whatever. Um, is he making any contribution to Everton? And if Rafa Benitez and the coaching staff think he's not really going to be challenging, then you may as well let him go out, might you? Yeah, he needs games. And it's, it's sad. I mean, the ideal situation was he'd be go somewhere and play the rest of the season, and then maybe come back in the summer. But mm. it does seem like Everton are cutting the losses and um, and are prepared to let him go. And I suppose, I suppose when you look at how many centre midfielders we've got and how how really little influence they have on the team, you know he he's not going to come in and change a game yet. He might come on for fifteen minutes if you need someone to more or less to go off, mm. uh, like like a Chelsea. If you you know Tom Davis. He's getting to that point now where it's like, you know, he's another one who needs games of football. Yeah. Gomez is later later on in his career where probably a move to somewhere like Portugal or back to Spain would suit everybody. Mm. I still I, st- I still think he's a he's a his football ability is there. I just don't think he can get round the pitch. Yeah, yeah. Um and I think Abaman's similar. And do you, do you need games of football? All three of those players need to play to for their own sake. You know, Tom Needs to play games regularly for his own development, I believe. Yeah. You know, and I think, I think there's still a player in there. But I think he's come to a, 
age at Everton where it's just not going to happen. Mm. And he's, you know, listen, the mad thing is he, he would have got games, of course, in the last couple of months if he'd been fit, but he hasn't been fit. But, you know, again, he, he it's funny with Tom because he always starts the season, everyone writes him off, but he always gets games mm. because of the way the Premier League is. And last season we saw he came on as like the number six when Alan got injured and he was he was good in there, I mm. thought. He used to take the ball off the back four and I thought he used it really well. So he's got injured at the wrong time, but he's he's someone who needs to go out for his own development. I think I think we've just come to that point. It's like, no, John Joe Kenny, it's like similar. I mean, I don't think John Joe Kenny's anywhere near the level Tom Davis is as a Premier League footballer, but he's another one he needs to go. But as those midfielders, you look at them and you think, well, they're not match, they're not game changers. We've got two centre midfielders who play week in and week out. Alan's thirty one, the core is twenty eight. Mm. You you need to freshen that area up, and okay, you've got at the other end of the spectrum, you've got um, Onyango, who's obviously like eighteen, mm. up and coming. Uh, he, he needs games, but at the other end, yeah. so it's there's a weird balance. There's very there's no one in the in the middle. There's no twenty three year old, twenty four year old established. Well be one in a couple of weeks, but, but that's that's it, isn't it? And that's where Everton. I mean, Gabamon is around that age. He's twenty five, isn't he? Mm. Gabamon, but. He needs games of football, so Everton have got might look at it, and it's I suppose it's similar to the Mina situation where you look at it and go, if everything was equal, there's no way you'd sell Mina's our best defender. Mm. But if someone come in for him, and I think the rumor AC Milan, not Twitter rumor AC Milan are looking at him, mm. and you'd have to go if that was a deal that Everton eighteen months left on his contract, you'd go probably take that because it it would suit all parties, and that's where Everton I think are with quite a few players. You know, <laughs> we need to clear the decks, but at the same time, we need to obviously bring players in. I, I look at our, the midfield, and other than you've got Alan Decore, and they're the, they're the two, aren't they? They're the first choice, two, they're the obvious choice. Then we've got Fabian Delf, who I'd be amazed if he plays for Everton again. Yeah, he's gone missing again, hasn't he? And then every day, God knows where he is. Uh, so I can't see him play many more times for Everton, and his contract's up in the summer anyway. So there's one. Gomez, you just mentioned, who's probably the one out of all of them who's still got something to offer, but he's 28 himself, and like you say, in the Premier League, about power and pace, hasn't got it, you know, hasn't got either, but he's good on the ball, but there's Gomez, Davis, coming up to being 20, he's 24, I think, this year. Mm. Um, he's, Tom Davis, I think, can play in the Premier League as a six. Yeah, yeah. He needs two decores with him yeah. to cover it. So he's another one. And then, like you say, there's John Philippe Gabamon as well, who needs games of football. Mm. And therefore, you're talking, you can't really argue a case for the four players we've got in reserve. And then there's Tyler, obviously Tyler Nyango, who is only 18, and we don't know whether he, he can even hack it in the Premier League yet. He's a young lad. Mm. Um, but he's someone you want to develop. So he naturally stays because he's someone you want to develop. The other four. You can't really make a case. I mean, I personally hope we keep on keep holding Gabamon because I still remember what he was like before it, it, the injury. But is that more out of sentimentality rather than be, be, you know, business? Yeah, rather than base, probably, hard nosed business. Probably. And you are right, and we do as fans, we do make those decisions in our own heads about players. There are up to, listen. There's a lot of fans out there who do who, who don't make those decisions like that, and and ultimately they turn out to be right a lot of the time because we do have sentimentality when it comes to with football fans but Everton it's like the Dean situation it's like loads of people mm. looking at it through the prism of a sentimentality and, and Dean yeah, versus not. Benitez no I know and Dean versus Benitez but the simple fact is if Everton could get 30 million for a 29 you know it's good business mm. it's no, good it business oh you look at Cabamon and you say he's, on, say he's on 50 grand a week he's played three games or something four games in in Two years, over two years, whatever. But he's trained for six months now. Yeah, he's trained. He's not getting in now, yeah. so there's obviously an issue, isn't there? Um, and so, therefore, based on those statistics, you wouldn't keep him. Yeah. The reason why I would, the reason why I'm erring on the side of trying to keep him is because he's got all the attributes I want for a midfield player. He's, he's big, strong. He can, or he used to be able to get about the pitch, but without playing regular games, that just ebbs away. So you're coming up to a series now where situation where. Last time he was regularly starting games was the end of the 2018-19 season. The last AFCON. So the AFCON, it? yeah, 2019. So we signed him 
off the on the back of that, we he had a good season for Mainz. We'd signed him then, and he's not played any kind of. He's had no regular game since then, mm-hmm. and we're in twenty twenty two, so that that isn't good. And, and you write someone with a business, and it might be Benitez might just go, look, this lad isn't fit enough to play in the Premier League for us, mm-hmm. and therefore we need someone who can. And we're carrying players in the squad who aren't contributing to the team. They're taking money out. Like if you've got him and him and Delph, there's say a hundred and fifty thousand yeah. pound a week going out the door. On two lads who ain't playing mm-hmm. for us, so just basic maths and economics says, yeah, you're right. If you can get money for them or whatever, you let them go. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But there's a few of them. But hopefully, come the summer, even if you take a baman out of this, hopefully, come the summer, we've got. Well, we know there's no there's no Sigurdsson anymore anyway. But no Delph. Um, there'll be no Tosin. John Joe won't stay. You know, so there's four plays immediately. I, I imagine Andy Lonergan won't stay no. past the summer. So there's five out the squad gone straight off. I don't know. I, I think Andy Lonergan might get out the month. <laughs> he could. He could do. Listen, he, he could because I think he's back now, isn't he? Harry Tyre is back. The back to three keepers, mm. unless the manager just keeps yeah. him around because he's a he's a good trainer. No, I don't mm. know. But at the end of the season, I imagine he's yeah, gone as well. Gone. So there's five immediately out the squad who were gone. Yeah. Um, I imagine Everton will try and get a couple of them out this month. I imagine Mason Holgate may go as well. And then it is it, then you start coming into the decisions yeah. on the likes of Yeti Mean and Andre the, Gomez. The problem is a lot of like the likes of like, the likes of most clubs are looking for loans, aren't they? And we're not. Gabamin might go on loan and it might be the best thing for him because we then I, I imagine he'll go to Italy. If he can on. make a if we can go on if he can go on loan, then we can make an inf- a real informed decision. If he plays 15 playing. games of what his levels are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if he does well, then that club we take him might say, actually, you know what? We'll keep him. He's only 25. Yeah. We'll pay you know, 10 million in the summer or something for him, for a 25 year old midfield player. Yeah. So it's interesting. It's, you know, there's. I think we've got more players we want to get rid of than, than we want to keep. Than we want to keep. Um, yeah. And that's the. That's the that's the issue, isn't it? Is that you know the manager? If, 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 feel sorry for the manager in that respect. If the, is that there's a lot of players at, at the club who just aren't good enough, and he can't turn it round quick enough. No is, manager can turn it round quick enough. Is this why? And I know a lot of people don't want him, but is this why Sean Longstaff is so appealing to the manager? In fact, because you, you're looking at a player who. It's, it's, it's probably his value at the moment. It's probably about three million quid because his contract's up in the summer. He's Twenty-four years of age. He's played in the Premier League. Six foot or five eleven. We'll put it this way: if Sean, Lang, Long, Sean Longstaff came to Everton, or if two players come this month, two more players, sorry, and Sean Longstaff was one of them, mm. then that's that's six players out of eleven in the first team that are Rafa Benitez. Yeah. And then you've got Jordan Pickford. Who'd get in anyway. Who'd get in anyway. Mm. Dominic Carvalho. lewin get in anyway. Richarlison. Get in anyway. Alan and Decore. Mm. Yeah. And that's on top of Anthony Gordon, who has been made better by Rafa Benitez. Yes, yeah. No matter what anyone says, he has. Yeah, he's massively important. And then your issue then is your, is your centre-backs. Your centre-backs, which is a huge issue. Which is, so then it, so then is then your next thing is, the first thing you do in the summer, Sounds and this, nice. listen, this has all me just... The first thing hypothetical, but yeah, that's hypothetical. Doing, but the yeah. first thing you look at is the centre back, then, isn't it? That's yeah. the first thing you know. Then your number one target in the summer is a centre back, mm. and you can go. This is my team. So we listen. Whether you like Benitez or not, you substitute them for another manager. But how many times have we said this is not the manager's team, or these? You've talking talking half the team would be Benitez's, and the other half would get into quite a lot of Premier League teams. Mm. So mm. then suddenly. The burden of responsibility is on Rafa Benitez, mm. and but he can hold his hand up and go, "Well, this is my team, and all those players you've been moaning about." For I seen a I seen a uh, there was a video clip last night on Twitter from Steve Alston from the Man United team, mm. and he just said, "What well, you know, you've said a lot of people have said on we said on here is these set of players 
throwing another manager on. We had a conversation yesterday about Ragnick at United. We've had it, mm. you know, talking to each yeah, other about yeah. it, going, oh, oh, people are starting to say, oh, he's not, we don't like his methods. Why? Because he makes you work hard. Yeah. Because he make, cause he keeps gets you out. And I, I think, and I, it's a very impassioned little video. If you if you find it on tw- Twitter, from stage, just basically saying I'm not prepared to have a go with this manager while these same players. And man, they are to get a little taste of what we've gone through. Yeah, and well, like it. I don't know steroids, United. Well, they are, aren't they? And it's the same thing. Oh, there's clicks and all this, and it's like mm, that sounds familiar. <laughs> and it's like, oh, is he making you do things you don't want? Oh, because the things that, the things that the you know what I've been doing, I've been working so successfully. See, I know what the, the issue now with modern day footballers is. They are. They're overpaid. They're just overpaid. The Molly Coddled. You get, no, you know, no, 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 I'm gonna say it. Go on, no, when, I agree with you. You know, when like we saw with us with our club, Brentford away, mm. when the fans yeah, yeah. let them know, and you see them like look on us as like shock, mm. and like you're getting paid a hell of a lot of money to walk around that football pitch, and then people who are throwing the arm at you and telling you to get off the pitch had to get up at four yeah. o'clock this morning, spend their wages, which wages in this country. Uh, if they can be low the bleeding, infl- you know, the cost yeah, yeah. of living and all that. People are, all the money they've got, they spend. Yeah, they sacrifice the holidays and, and all that. And they want to go. They want to go to the match. And they want to see those players work the bollocks off. Yeah. Now, it isn't always about results. Because sometimes you will give every... Everton would have got beat 2-1 at Chelsea. Say Chelsea mm. scored in the last minute the other week. Would if they'd have gone down to the Everton fans who made that trip to London on a Thursday night yeah. before Christmas, do you think those fans behind the goal would have been going, get off the yeah. fuck? They wouldn't need to clap them because the players that night yeah. with the kids in the team give everything yeah. they had that night. They get, um, you know, they did. Yeah, yeah. Right, but there's no excuse, and I use this for United as well. There's no excuse why you should walk off a football pitch without giving everything. Everything so that no no one in that dressing room should be able to look at you and go, you never pulled your fucking finger out today, you would or whatever, right? And that should be happening every single day in training as well, by the way, because they are in a hugely mm. privileged position. But these players, not just at Everton, but Premier League players in Manchester United, are, are definitely guilty of this as well. Is that the minute they don't like something, mm. they don't. We, we've all worked in jobs where we don't like the manager or we don't like the job or whatever, but you do it because you think, I need to do it, it's my job, I've got yeah. to do it. Footballers just go, I don't like him. Do you know what? We're seeing it now. We're no, what I was going to say then, when you said about being, it's not about it's not about how much they get paid. For mm. me, it's a, it's how they get paid. Mm. They get paid no matter what. Yeah. So you look at like yeah. the way it used to be bonuses and stuff, and mm. you look at like say the NFL, where people mm. sign these big contracts, but they're not guaranteed. They're not, gar- no, they're not no. guaranteed contracts. No, no. You can be cut at any time. Fella, the other day in the NFL, just walked off the pitch. He had, a, he had an argument with, with the coach. The next day, he was, he was cut. He was gone. Yeah. He was gone. Yeah. They, have, they have bonuses for reaching the playoffs mm. or getting so many things Should done. Be bonuses and that's what, that's what I was going to say. It's like, they get paid. and this For failure. For, they pay for anything. Mm. So you've got a situation where players walk off the pitch and they go, oh, I've earned my money. Because I haven't actually had to do the thing I'm supposed to do, mm. which is get a win or get a goal or get an assist or get a clean sheet. Mm. So all those bonuses players used to have and fight for, they've gone. So where's so where's the no incentive? Where's the incentive? Mm. Where's the incentive for that to get the club will go? Have we get no? We could get an extra place from this game in the last game of the season. We get fifth mm. or whatever. Or we get an extra get two an extra million two quid million or whatever. Culture. And the players are like, yeah, um, get on that plane. Then. Half an hour, an hour after the game, I can be in a beach. I can be on a plane and on a beach, mm. and maybe that. Well, it's not. There's no maybe about it. That is the problem. Mm. That is absolutely and the it's problem. It's only when you get to the very top level that, the, and the reason why then teams are so good is because the players are so good and they, they they work hard and got a manager they like and all that. Do you think every Man City player likes Guardiola? No, but they all realise that they have to work the bollocks off to to stay at Man City because they're getting all the rewards. Same at Liverpool. I think everyone loves Klopp. I bet they don't, mm-hmm. but do, do, do they respect them and they work the do. bollocks off? <laughs> I don't think all of them do because it, it's like if you're not playing, you wouldn't. It's the shit. If you're a proper, like if you're a proper professional footballer, then you should be fuming that you're not in that starting eleven. 
You should be because it, you, you're not being allowed to do I what I you think good do, managers. But you can still work hard. I think good managers turn it though, don't they? And make it like that. You should be fuming with yourself then. In a way, isn't it? Yeah, That's what good managers there'll be, do. There'll be things, there'll be clubs where players don't think they should be in the first team and they're not because yeah. the manager's got something. Well, they could even be doing it right now. Only mm. but his head should be down and working hard. Shouldn't be trying to, uh, you know, trying to engineer the way to move away. And we see it with mm. enough players who who just go, no, I, I don't want to do what you want to do. And it all does come because, like what you just said, they get paid no matter what, yeah. good, bad, indifferent. And but you know, no, in normal walks of life. People lose the job well, for, for underperforming and not giving yeah. everything, don't they? Symp- and sympathies run out. Run out well, in, that's it, and that's the thing. And, you know, and, 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 and it is what it is. Uh, Carl says he uh, had an interesting interview yesterday about Coutinho. Apparently, one of the reasons he's failed to settle is he's incredibly shy and introverted. Needs an arm around him and cuddles. I can't see Rafa being the right person. He's gone to Villa, isn't he? Coutinho has gone to Aston Villa. He's not going to Everton. Uh, Stephen Guy says, I yeah, feel sorry we never got the chance to see Gabamon. Could have been a great, but we'll never know. Hope he stays injury-free and has a successful career elsewhere. Uh, Phil says, Shaman hasn't worked out um, for Gabamon. We all had high hopes for him. Richard Pass says, Afternoon, chaps. Keep seeing this bar chart of uh, how much each Premier League team can spend this year. Spurs apparently have £400 million to spend, and we can spend minus £35 million. Over the past three years, they've spent three hundred million and recouped a hundred, while we've spent one hundred and seventy-five and recouped a hundred mm. over the same period. Is that big shiny stadium really producing a five hundred and sixty million pound difference? Well, that what what I will say, Richard, is that like, bar chart that Kira Maguire produced is actually not accurate either. It was made up on assumptions, mm. but they will have money. To, I yeah. don't. I don't think they've got four hundred million to spend. Daniel Levy will be. It. Um, but I think they already come out and said they only had about a hundred million that charge. Well, they've got, but they've got money they've because got of stadium, the stadium and everything else that goes kit with it. Kit deal, sponsorship, and they're always in the Europe. Europe aren't you've, they? you've got to put everything together for mm. where that money comes from. Yeah. Everton don't make any money. They no. just don't. They are one of the worst clubs I've ever known for, for commercial deals. Well, yeah, well, not even commercial deals. Yeah, but I've just named four players who are walking out the door for not yeah. in the summer. And last summer we had another. Six or seven that worked out in the summer before we had another five or six that worked out. Players are on big contracts at Everton, walk out the door for yeah. no money. We're terrible at knowing when to sell players at any level. Yeah. And it is difficult, don't get me wrong, the last couple of years have been difficult with COVID. Money yeah. hasn't sloshed around. A few clubs have found that, but Everton are particularly bad at knowing when to sell. And that's why I guess the Luca Dean um, deal business people and people you talk to who aren't Evertonians, I've spoken mm. to a couple this week, I like, it's a great deal, like, get them gone, really good deal, 29 soon, mm. bring a young lad in and then you do that with the rest of your team, you start turning that squad into it, being a, a um, something that can make you yeah. money, don't you? Keith Powell said, I'm so disappointed for JP, two years of injury, no luck, lots of tears I'm sure, COVID isolation rehab, what a tough time for the lad, I wish him the best of luck, it'd be nice if he was successful at Everton, but I have a feeling they could be back in France. Graham says, surely the lad deserves a loan somewhere for the season and have another look at him. Why the hell they? Why the hell don't they let any player come back from injury playing the 23s? It is mad that... Do you find it mad that Everton haven't allowed them to play three or four games at under 23 level? It's the players. Just to get used to but playing. But it's the players. The players, doesn't want to play. the players can refuse to play in the under 23s. It's, this, is, this is what we're talking about. You know, you've got under twenty threes there, and you have to basically get the permission of the player. Mm. You can't, you know, they'll turn around and go, "No, I'm a first team player." That's a different team. I'm, I'm, the, I'm in this team. Mm. You that, think they'd want to have a problem. couple of games though, just for the rhythm? But that's you? the problem, though. Isn't I it? would. Again, though, that's a footballing problem. The manager should be able to say to any player, "You're going to play for the under twenty threes today." Albeit differently, but remember when the ass couldn't get a game, and then he went and played in the twenty three, scored like ten goals in four or five games. Don't get me wrong, didn't turn out amazing. But then he went on loan to Hull, yeah. played for Silver, scored goals. Seamus Coleman came back, played on the 23s mm-hmm. games, just to probably for his own mental. Just to get playing again. Just to play but playing. That, but if it's like you say, that's down to the player, then some of them won't want it. But that's, that's, that's uh, embarrassing. Oh, it is, of course. It is. Crimson says, uh, Gabam and I'll ped in. And Ford says, ped playing CAM and Baz up top. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't play in that. I could never play centre midfield. I played every single position on the pitch. I played in goal sometimes. 
but I couldn't play. I no. couldn't get Centre the rhythm midfield. of it. Couldn't get the no. rhythm of I it. I have played. Obviously, I was a striker, but I played wide midfield. It was okay. It's like a wide play. No. It was all right. It wasn't great. I played left back once for an emergency and had a stormer. I played centre midfield once and lasted about thirty-five minutes. For the manager, just went uh, go up front. You the, got I'll tell you. I never I'll tell you my where my first game at centre midfield was. I can tell you exactly where it was. Go on. At Goodison Park. Was it? Yeah. That was my first time playing centre midfield. Was at Goodison Park, no. and it was horrendous. I played like the first time I ever asked to play. It was um, it's that place in Wales, the mad one. I mean, that could be anywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not far into Wales. Oh, what's it called? Gone key. No, 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 no. Real? It'll come back to me. No, it'll come back. But I played there and I played centre mid. I lasted to like thirty two minutes. A man, it was yeah. like, but you know why? Because I I only want, basically I only wanted to go that way. Yeah. And people were just running. Uh, yeah. A little bit like Michael Keane. Yeah. People were running off me, and I was like, oh, was I supposed to go with him? Yeah. And we were just getting overloaded. He put me up front, and it, and obviously scored. And it was a bit better, but centre mid, I could not. I just did not have a clue. No. And it's, it's such a, a tough position. difficult position. Especially in the Premier League, if you're not if you're not mobile yeah. or used to it, isn't it? So and that's yeah, it why is. it winds me up that they dropped Gabamon back into a two-man midfield against the maybe, team. Who maybe, the maybe they should play Gabamon centre back. Someone else said that. Is he not worth a go centre back? Like, come on. Yeah, well, I mean, Emmy One G says, would it not be worth trying Gabamon at centre back given he's played that position before and our other options are heavily criticised or injured? Maybe Imagine he turned out to be like the centre back head that needs just amazing centre back. Oh, wouldn't that be glorious? Um, you know, as Andrew Cunningham says, click the like button, people. It's right, Andrew. Nice one, mate. We do have a video uh, coming out on Patreon with John Blaine talking about this the board situation, Graham Sharp. Mm. Uh, also talking about the FFP situation in the Premier League and his thoughts on what you just said about the chart and all that. Saying, you know, and he'll give. If so, if you're on Patreon, mm-hmm. that'll be uh, available. Uh, if you're not on Patreon, why aren't you on Patreon? Mm-hmm. Exclusive videos, daily live videos. Come and join us. The link will be in the description. There you go. Ethan Ward wouldn't mind Zakaria, neither would I. I. Believe his wages are high, but he's free, isn't he? So whether you could offset it that way, and I think you'll have a few after him, but um, he's someone who, who could do a, a really good job, I think, in Everton's midfield. Um, Intellectual affluence says Kabam and leaving would make no difference, no one would even notice. I think um, he would. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, do you think we should play him as centre back? Says DP. Uh, he's played there quite a lot, plays there for his country. I feel like it might be easier for him because of how fast paced the midfielders. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know whether I don't know whether Everton have looked at him in training. You know, we we obviously don't see him, do we? We don't see whether he's good, bad, indifferent, do we? We, we can only say that he's been fit for months and he's not really played, so I don't know. Uh, Toffee Top says, um, Gabamon is a modern-day Danny Williamson. Luis Diaz off to Liverpool, apparently. Mm. Mm. Devastating. He dumb. didn't have the money. He's perfect for them as well. He, he looks like their type of player, doesn't he? It's a bit devastating because he's an exciting player. They've been great, I think. I us. never, I just, he's never signing for Evans, mm. so not really asked. Um, Jenny says, hey, Gabama not having a career here, it's over. The guy, Samari at Leicester, will be decent for us or someone of that ilk. How much influence will Sharp have over Machiri at board level? Is it a token gesture? Which game, Sharp? Sharp thing, yeah. I don't know if it's a token gesture. I think it's a. I think it's another voice on the on a board which really isn't fit for purpose anyway. That, that's why I'm not asked about it. I just don't see the point of me and asked about it. Mm. The board's not fit for purpose. Mm. The chairman's not fit for purpose. The CEO's not fit for purpose as far as I'm concerned. So adding Graham Sharp to it doesn't make any difference to me. It just it's just means nothing to me. Mm. Just okay. another brick in the wall. Okay. That's so People, if people want to get upset about it, that's up to them. I, I, I'll, I'm while while the chairman's still the chairman, I couldn't give a monkeys about the ball because it's not fit for purpose. Okay. Uh, Jerry Anderson says. Uh, Jerry Anderson. Jerry Anderson. Didn't yeah. he make Thunderbirds? <laughs> Might have done. Says Longstaff is better than well, the midfielders. I was going to say Jerry Armstrong, but he was Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. But Jerry Anderson, I'm and a great sure. commentator. I met Spanish. him. In, no, I met him outside the Bernabeu. Jerry. Yeah. Did you say great goal against Spain? 
No. No, I, left. I just left that. Oh, fair play. Um, Thierry says, long staff is better than your midfielders, to be honest. Alan's overrated. Gomez is crap. And Decore, he's good box to box, but he can't dictate a game. Is Alan crap, or is he just not being played in the right position? Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. With that, listen, with the likes of long staff, right? The likes of long staff. Who? I've not seen loads of them. No. I've seen, obviously, I've seen the clips. I've seen them in games and stuff. He's got the his stats are all right. Yeah. He's, he's physically he matches up. Uh, he gets about the pitch quite well. He's one of them players. But I just look at him and think, well, is he better than our subs? Mm. Who we've got as options at the moment in, the, in midfield? He probably is. <clears throat> and then it's up to him. Then if he comes in, it's up to him to. Yeah work his way into a team and make himself undroppable. If not, and Everton buy another one in the summer and he becomes the sub, then the level's gone up already, isn't it? It's what the likes of West Ham and people like that have got. They're, like, they're backups, yeah. uh, steady, decent players, where our backups. Yeah. It's difficult to get excited about Oh, it. you couldn't get excited about them, no. But, no. yeah. Um, the old Maloney, Joe Maloney, rather, says, I think getting rid and having a clear out of us trying something fresh instead of waiting for something stale to become better. Yeah, fair mm -hmm. play. I think if Everton, I think if someone comes in in terms of Gabamon, Everton will let him go. I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, him and probably about half a dozen others. Um, but who knows? Everton linked again with Adam Ramsey today. To... Well, he's been told he's definitely leaving New Bay, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. He'll go somewhere. He'll go to Newcastle. Because they'll probably pay him 300 grand a week or something. Um, Nick Garns, he says, love your work, lads, up the mighty blues, much love from Australia. That's right, Nick. Yeah, watching, right. Watching Keep kicking game. tennis players out. Yeah, he's got, I've just seen it, he's got that appeal, hasn't he? 72 hours he's there for, for yeah. this appeal. Um, Steve K says, Gabamon has had more injury layoffs than Darren Anderton for Spurs, he was known as sick note. Um, Nick Steve P says, Baz, have you seen that new mini series on the BBC iPlayer? Four Lives about uh, the grinder killer, Stephen Merton plays. I mean, what's that got it's to come do from with nowhere, though? No, but you know what, Steve? I might check that out. <laughs> I might check that out. Uh, Ruben De Souza says, Do you reckon Branthwaite will start against Leicester? He's injured at the moment, isn't he? So, don't know. I don't, I don't know whether he'd come straight back into the team. He might have played against Brighton had he been fit at the weekend because of Chelsea. Mm. Well, no, I, I guess you know more when. If we played three at the back against Hull and he was available. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. If he's if he's available this week, then maybe. But um, Scouser on the Whittle said you need to allow Rafa time to build his own squad. I Can't love the fact that he has to quantify his Scouser well, on the Whittle. He's just telling you. <laughs> uh, he can't be judging him based on the players he's inherited. I know, but I think, I think about it, I think with stuff like that, he's got to... Do you more? You can't just go. This is not my team. Yeah. This is not my team. This is not my. They're team. not. They're not. They're not that bad that you no. lose. Tw you win one and twelve. No, no, not at all. It's not like he's inherited a, a team of Neds. No, it isn't. So no. Yeah, I mean definition of athlete. Is yeah, I mean, your definition of an athlete and mine are yeah. very different. Yeah. Ned. Would again, he? Again, again, 50% win ratio. Yeah. Nah. Maybe, again, yeah, but you, no, you're, one, you're one person. That's fair. Is that a band? Well, yeah. You know it, what I mean? Now class? you're changing the definition of what a band is. Yeah. So. One man band. Like Dick Van Dyke. The name's in it. <laughs> Dick. Just what, everybody? Up, yeah. I'm Nick. <laughs> chim, chim, innit? Uh, <laughs> Keith Powell says, what about your mate, Sakaria Baswell? Exactly, Keith. Free in the summer, but like I said, big wages. Uh, Lions Eat says, uh, Afternoon, lads and fellow Blues. I think Rafa is getting rid of the players that are not playing well or are a burden to the club. I do feel sorry for Gabamon, but we've seen <clears throat> him through the other side of his injuries and he's maybe just not good enough. Sometimes ruthlessness works. Thoughts? We have got to be ruthless, I guess. No, we've got we? to be. We've got to be ruthless and I've got no problem with that. It just feels... When, when you have a player... Especially with injuries, that you never, it's, it's unfulfilled. Mm. It's unfulfilled, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And then you start going, oh, could he play centre back? And then you just know he'll go somewhere 
and he'll play 30 games do all right, and yeah. suddenly people will be going oh he looks a player in why did we ever let him go mm. without thinking that there's no way we can give him 30 games in the Premier League there's just no way that, that's the problem with the Premier League compared to other leagues I think is that mm. in other leagues I don't think the pressure is there to you know there's like teams that will I look at I tell you it's a good example of that Um Oh, what's his name? Uh, Cazola. Yeah, so he yeah. was at Arsenal and he was yeah. basically told his career he was, was finished. finished. Yeah, yeah. He, went, he goes to Spain, goes to Villarreal and he was brilliant. I think he got back in the, squid, in the Spain squad. He was brilliant. But at Villarreal, I think it was Villarreal, he was allowed to just play football and there was no real pressure on him because the probably way they thought about it was we're not going to be relegated and we're not going to get into the top four. Yeah. So we'll just get on with it mm. and we'll just enjoy it. Yeah. And the other leagues are all a little bit like that because even teams that probably feel the pressure of relegation, don't the drop isn't too bad. They're not going to lose millions. Yeah, of mil- yeah. There's no They don't have a, a second tier like we have where it's like if you think you're dropping it, you think, well, we mightn't come straight back up. Mm. So there's always a pressure. So it's always about buying players, and players never get a run of game. We, you know, you can't, you couldn't say to someone, he just needs a run of games. I mean, he just needs 15 games under his yeah, belt. That's 15 that. games where he'll be slagged off every game mm. by fans and the media. Going, what are you doing playing him? There's never the, the Premier League is just relentless, and that is that's that, that's the good thing about it, but it's also the worst thing about it because if you get a bad injury, you can almost kiss your career goodbye at yeah, that club. Yeah, yeah. Because they'll go out and buy your replacement straight away. And that's sadly what, what we'll probably see if Gabamini will go somewhere, play 20 odd games, and people will go, Oh, he's great, this fella. Mm. And then he'll get linked up with a move to Leicester. <laughs> uh, Keith Lynch says more mismanagement by prior regimes. It was a panic buy because Garner left last day, usual 11 replacement. It wasn't last day, was it? Um, a few weeks before the season, the window ended. But. Fair enough. I mean, I think he'd watched them for a while, to be honest, but we get, he was so late in the window because of the African nations, Cup of Nations. And also we game. sold Ghana quite late. <clears throat> we sold Ghana late, didn't we? So, um, modern day, modern players rather, uh, no, I'm not going to read that, Kevin. Um, where are we? Cam says he's supposed to be working, but why bother when I can watch the boys? That's it. Top well, man, Cam. I'm, I'm surprised you've got the energy to work after your own like COD sessions. Yeah, heard so, about this, Cam. I know. mean, Ned's writing in the comments as us mm. saying he is an athlete. Ah, Ned, don't to be ever fair. do that. Don't ever so, do that. That is not us. Ever That's that. not us who writing it. No, it's not an athlete. Um, it's definitely, it's the opposite of an athlete. Hundred percent says, uh, "Hey, mm. fellas." Thoughts on Rodwell playing in the A League? Up the effing Sophies from Lloyd Oz. Uh, I read this the other day about him. He's, he's gone over there, hasn't he? And he's, he's doing all right. He's hoping he's thirty. He's going on about like the Sunderland till I die, making him out to be a knobhead. A knobhead, basically. And he was like, it, it wasn't like that at all, and yeah. and all of that. But he's hopefully he's another one, isn't he? He's another one with injuries have just destroyed him. You know, every time he's got in and got a bit of a run going, yeah. he's picked up an injury and. He's ne- he'll, his career will finish and he'll have never no. fulfilled what he could have done. Um, but big Evertonian still wishes he hadn't Life, gone to City. It? Same with him. Um, we wanted to sell him though, didn't we? No, yeah. Moyes, Moyes, well, Moyes just looked at him and went, he doesn't play for us and someone wants to give us 12, mm. <laughs> 12 million quid, <clears throat> which I can use elsewhere and he sold him. And I was like, oh, haven't they losing another young prodigy? And I was like, doesn't play. He's not going to get in. It was almost like the easy win, wasn't it? Mm. The easy way to make 12 million quid. Um, Jerry Anderson says, do you think Tom Davis has got a career at the club or is it over for him? Or a future at the club, rather? Or is it over? It depends what he wants. If he's willing to be a squad member for probably the, the rest of his career, then he'll continue, I imagine, to get contracts. Because he's... he's he does a job. Mm. Um, the only thing I would say is I do think his is this season his he's been um, the new rules on fouls has stopped a lot of his of what what he used to do well, well which has fall over a lot. Um, balls, yeah. It's whatever he wants. He might get to a stage of his career. Listen, he loves loves being around the city, loves living in the city, loves that lifestyle. 
don't get me wrong, he doesn't take it for granted. He works hard every day. And he knows he'll get opportunities during the season. Managers trust him. It, dep- it depends if he wants more as a footballer mm. or he's like willing to just... It, it's clear to me. Well, I think it's clear to a lot of people. Football isn't the be-all and end-all for him in terms of his life and his lifestyle. That doesn't mean he doesn't give it 100%. I just mm. think he's someone who just looks around and thinks, well, I've got a great job. I'm going to work hard at it, but it's not going to define who I am. Mm. And that sort of makes me feel like he would be happy just sticking around at Evan for the rest of his career and being a squad member and, mm. and playing, say, 20-odd games a season. And if that's what he wants. That's what he wants. He, you'll never get huge, huge wages doing that. Um, but if he's someone the club can rely on, you know, then... That'll be, that'll, but then the club might come to a point where they go, no, we need more than you now, mate. We'll let you go. We'll let you go. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll, we'll see. Chris Holden says, hello, boys. You reckon we'll get another centre-half? Because for me, that's our next priority this January. I don't think we'll get one this month. No. I think that'll be aimed for the summer, that one. I think we definitely need one, don't we? Um, we definitely need one. Stan says, Tom's a good lad, but isn't good enough for the club. Great lad. Good luck to him, but no. Um and then Joe Spatcher says, if we get beat on Saturday, do you think Rafa will be sacked? Don't see how he can save his job if we don't. Difficult one, isn't it? If he gets beat, you know, out the FA Cup, one win since September, but yet players are coming in. He's, play, he's talking about more players. Mm. It's just a very weird. It's 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 just a very weird situation, you know. They they've they've come out and they've said we expect a set better second half of the season. Well, would you know we've gone would going up going up the FA Cup, mean a bit. No, of course it wouldn't. So, yeah, it'd be a very strange situation if he was to hold on to his job, but I don't know what's going on at this club at the moment. So, brother underscore Abel says Baz. To provide better competition in the under-23s, we should create a B team that plays in a lower league, helps players adjust to the British game, recover from injury. It's getting them into those... You can't. Getting them into the divisions, though, mate. It's a good idea. Other countries do it. We don't do it in this because of the, the football pyramid. Um, Cam says we should all get on COD. And Michael Locke says rather Davies over Longstaff. I think centre-back could be late on. Well, see, I think they'll just use Brantwaite, you see, as the if the whole gate went as the, the fourth, they'd just be promoted to that. So there you go. Right, we're done. Thank you very much for joining us. Subscribe if you haven't hit that like button on your way out. And if you want more videos, including Daily we'll, Lavish, this one will be doing we'll this. We'll be back five, at five o'clock. Five over on o'clock Patreon. Doing this on Patreon. So take it easy. Have a good day. See you later. <laughs>